Hey everybody, how's it going? Sorry for the delay. Um, we're about to kick it off. I've got an amazing guest for you today. Uh, Sid uh, from Hot Star, Sid Shakhtar from uh, Hot Star. We're gonna talk about some amazing things. Um, let's get started. Hey Sid, how are you? Hi Ronan, I'm good, how are you? Very good, great to see you again. Um, let, let's kick things up because I believe that we've got quite a, an international audience today waiting to uh, uh, hear about you and uh, about Hotstar. But for those who don't know about the Hotstar and a little bit about yourself, give us, uh, give us a, a, a quick brief. Sure. Uh, so Ronan, I work as the growth and marketing head for Hotstar. And uh, I've been with Hotstar about four years, um, leading growth and marketing for them since 2016. Uh, when I joined, um, I think we were at about, uh, we had a reach of about, or a base of about seven, eight million users. Today, we are at about uh, 150 million users, and I'm talking about times when there's no cricket. Um, and, uh, you know, going up to 300 million users when there's cricket. Um, you know, out of which eight million are paying subscribers. Um, so it's been a it's been massive growth over the last four years. It's been an exciting, fulfilling journey. Um, and before joining Hotstar, I was working with Amazon um, and with Reckit before that um, in the U.S. And um, I came back to India to basically, you know, because because there was this amazing opportunity with Hotstar, and I wanted to um, you know be in at the ground level, as they say. Um, and you know, since then it's been, uh, it's been quite fascinating. Yeah. It sounds like, uh, you, you chose the right time, the right place, the right market. Um, you know, I, I uh, let, let's kind of put this into context. Um, it was a couple of years ago that geo really set fire to, uh, to mobile internet in, in India. Tell us a little bit about the, like how this has kind of erupted consumer technology um, and, and your business? Uh, sure. Uh, so Ronan, yeah, you're right. About 2016, this is around October when Geo launched. Um, I think uh, the Indian market uh, went through an inflection point really and uh, there's a huge rise in the number of smartphone users. And I think the growth that year may have been with the launch of Geo was about 50% or so. Um, and I think we went from 200 million smartphones or 200 and something million smartphones to more than 300 million smartphones. Um, and since then, uh, you know, that, that year it may have been 50%, it, it's steadied down and it's become a stable growth of about 20, 25% year on year. So every year we add about net ads are about 70, 80 million uh, smartphones now. Uh, that we wow. see going online, you know. Um, uh, and so today we are at a base of about 520, 530 million uh, smartphones in India. Um, and it's been it's been a large part of why uh, it, it's it's been a lot. A lot of the wind behind the sales has actually come from Geo, you know, launching and being there. Um, and then the rest, of course, the Indian uh, consumers ecosystem has taken over and you know led to steady growth after that year on year once data became a little more affordable uh, for them with geo coming in you know um, and I think uh, we've uh, for Hotstar at least I, I can say this that uh, we always believed and contrary to what you would see in most of the rest of the world uh, India is uh, a huge mobile first or mobile screen first entertainment market um, where people there, there's actually a large section of the population that actually relies just on the mobile screen for the entertainment and doesn't have TVs, etc. The, the, and that's because to a large extent, India is a, a single household TV market. Um, you know, secondly, uh, commute times are large, etc., etc. And thirdly, uh, personal preferences are growing as well. So um, so we always believe that mobile would be a meaningful screen for entertainment and we built the app uh, like that and we focused on building the app like that where we were always mobile first. 
um, you know, and, and so it it worked the other it worked for us. The other thing that we did that is normally very difficult for people to do um, is we kind of had entertainment, sports, news, uh, and entertainment across eight languages, uh, very different languages with different scripts, different intonations, different um, you know, uh, completely different cultural context. We had those eight languages. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ronan. I said essentially a marketer's nightmare. That's right. Essentially a marketer's nightmare. Um, uh, we had, uh, uh, you know, we had uh, those eight languages. We had live sports. We had news. Um, we had everything clubbed together. And I think I, I don't think there's um, an app that has live sports and entertainment at the scale that we do. I mean, there might be some else, but with the scale that we have, I don't think anything like that exists. Um, and we were told by a lot of people at the very beginning that, uh, you know, you guys are kind of not all right, all up there because you're planning for mobile and you're planning to put all this together. And it's such a heterogeneous offering that you're putting together. Uh, and once you have that, how do you market it? How do you, uh, you know, without having to split yourself into marketing to each and every person, uh, which maybe the product can do for you, but but from a marketing perspective, how do you mean something for, say, a daily wage earner who's looking at you for maybe his cricket and uh, uh, the 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 most uh, you know uh, highest socioeconomic strata of the society, which uses you for say a Game of Thrones. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. hypothetically speaking here, but but you get the idea. Like you're we're straddling every kind of segment that exists in India, right, from a Game of Thrones down to, uh, you know, somebody who just want to watch, wants to watch two minutes of cricket. Um, and it's been, it's a, it's usually a challenge, but, um, you know, we've kind of, with, with a very, uh, uh, with a combination of building the brand and growth marketing, we've kind of managed to, you know, make a name, make a space for ourselves in, in 300 million Indian consumers' lives. Um, and that's, I think that's been, uh, it's been, it, it's, it's usually a very difficult and challenging thing to do, but it's something that we've managed to do. Um, and I think that's been a huge part of our growth story. Right. Yeah. This sounds, um, you know, it sounds like India within itself is a, is a rather complex market. Um, you know, I think, uh, First of all, a lot of global marketers need to remember that you know, India is not just one market, right? It's, it's, you know, eight, maybe multiple more markets with different languages and different nuances. Um, you know, I, I want to talk about something that, uh, you know, you're, you're really uh, passionate about this is marketing technology and how it's transformed. But, you know, I think for me, um, you as a, as a marketer, you use different technologies, right? Um, and something that you know I, I think uh, would be great to hear from you about, like the framework and the principles you use um, with your application of marketing tech. Sure. Um, so you know, well, I, I mentioned this briefly. Um, what we do is um, well, first was the fact that we, you know, you mentioned it as well. The the fact that we straddle eight different languages and so many different. Uh, kinds of entertainment, including live sports, uh, you know, and, and therefore so many different use cases across India and your brand and your destination having to mean uh, something for the people, right? And I'm not just saying this for me or Hotstar. I'm, uh, this probably stands true for anybody who has a similar uh, or intends to have a similar business and a marketing model. Um, you need, people need to have a reason to go to your brand. They need to have a space in their life for your brand. Um, there needs to be, you need to mean something to them that is not transactional. That is that is a, a deeper connection than just a very transactional connection. Uh, and for that, you need to build the brand up. Of course, the product, etc., also needs to be there. But you do need to build a brand from that perspective, uh, finding a gap in their needs, etc., that that you can fulfill. And if that gap is more life oriented, it's better for you to, uh, rather than a transactional need oriented, it's, 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 uh, it would be great for you to kind of uh, have your brand fill that 
life need and uh, kind of talk to everybody uh, from building a brand perspective in that fashion. Um, so that's one part of the framework. The other part of it is, um, and that's quite important because, you know, some in today's day and age, why should a consumer try you? Why should he give you five minutes? The belief to try even, or the belief to give you five minutes of their life uh, comes from them believing that it won't be wasted. Like you do mean something to them, whatever brand you are and whatever uh, uh, you know product you have, it doesn't matter. The fact is they need to believe that trying you or spending five minutes of their life on you isn't going to be wasted um, or, or uh, you are meaningful to them in some way. Um, right. The other thing is uh, we've looked at, a, you know, a very uh, uh, a growth oriented framework that one comes from driven by a RFM model. And I'll, I'll get a little more into it in a bit. Yeah, um, and the second by driving very targeted insights at very targeted audiences. And again, this is any brand that wants to grow and especially in today's normal, right? Today's new normal where. Uh, consumers are wary of spending on discretionary things unless they believe them to be absolutely essential uh, because of the uncertainty surrounding us. Secondly, they've, uh, consumers have gotten used to using lesser, um, you know. And thirdly, a uh, uh, lot of purchases that you were making earlier are now being put off uh, just because, you are, like, like I said, one, you're used to using lesser. Two, there's might not even the use it occasion hasn't come up, maybe. Um, so, so in that sense, you've now, as a brand, you've now got too hard to make sure consumers don't switch and two, uh, that you're talking to each and every segment of the consumers and trying to pull them, uh, back to your brand. Right. Um, and so what we've employed is one is the RFM framework. The other is getting the right insight for the right audience. And we've used, uh, digital marketing for that. So I, I'll give you an example of that and I'll use sport. Um, uh, as a as a as a factor here, um, yeah. when we built marketing for sport, um, you know the common uh, insight is that the most exciting part of a sport is uh, in cricket a four or a six, in baseball a home run, in in football a goal. You know those are the uh, highest conversion points of the sport, right? At the moment, and, uh, that, that's right. And uh, normally you would build your, if you had real time marketing, you would build it around that uh, factor. You know, um, it's your, it's your highest selling, it's your star, it's your hero uh, part of that sport. Um, but what we did is, you know, we took uh, segments of consumers uh, divided by say a male or a female or an age demographic or a behavioral demographic or some other consumption behavior that we were able to identify. Um, on the internet and we divided them into affinity groups um, and we kind of, uh, you know, sent out this communication to them uh, about the most exciting, you know, point in that match, like I said, a home run or a four or a six. Um, but we also built up a bank of other creatives and we had a system where we optimized, we had an automated system that we, which is rules based, but it optimized through different creatives to that same target audience, right? And it kept, as people responded differently to that creative, it kept breaking up the target audience segments um, and kind of uh, using this creative that worked best with that target audience, right? And it kept iterating through the creatives for that and also breaking up the target audiences. And what we found is that there was a creative about, uh, there was a communication on uh, some cricketer walking in for his turn, right, to bat. And uh, for a certain target audience segment, that just that just that communication of the cricketer walking in drove higher performance on that piece of communication than actually a four or a six in the match uh, for those people. Wow. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a very, it's, it's, Somebody walking in is not half as exciting as a big shot being hit. Yeah, sure. But but yeah, but but that but it drove much higher performance from the system was able to do identify a target segment for which this creative drove higher performance than any other creative. And mm -hmm. uh, the insight there is, uh, if you think about it, and, and this is how we've used data and 
a marketing system and a marketing framework to arrive at an insight. And you normally go the other way. You go from insight here, but here we are kind of using data in the system to arrive at an insight and then you know optimize it further. The insight here was that there are some people who basically, you know, there are fan worshippers. They're not so interested in the game, but they're very interested in the person. They idolize that person. Uh, and they're not hardcore watchers of the game, but they love watching that person when he comes in, you know, when he comes into play. Uh, and it's a, we call it, for some it's like a, you know, fan worshipping or idol worshipping or whatever you want to call and it. And that's it. That's right. That's right. So it's a, it's a personality. The moment that the uh, hair on your arm raises when you see that uh, hero coming onto stage, right? Um, maybe that happened to me 20 years ago, not anymore, but I'm sure it does happen to some people. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, you know, so it's, it's a personality, you're a follower and inside is, you know, you're a personality follower rather than an exciting move, than a moment chaser in the game. Right. And so you, you know, using this, we built up different kinds of insights around different segments and iterated through creatives that work for them. The other thing that I mentioned was the RFM model, right? And I think every brand, I think at this point, needs to kind of have that framework in mind where you're looking at uh, uh, reach, frequency, and monetary value. And that's what RFM uh, stands for, you know? Uh, we are, a lot of us in our cash conservation mode these days, right? And if mm -hmm. you want to conserve cash, there's two ways to do it. You either don't spend or you spend it uh, on things that get you disproportionate returns, right? So if you spend a dollar, you need to make two dollars on it or, or something like that, right? And, and that is your monetary value right there. Um, it doesn't come from that one-time transaction. It might come from a lifetime value, and that's actually the best way to estimate um, your lifetime value against uh, the frequency of that person coming in because that shows you his affinity uh, uh, to the brand. And, and this is not true for just video. You can use this model for pretty much any product that exists out there, right? Is frequency of purchase or is frequency of consumption, right? Um, and thirdly, uh, you know, the, the, the reach into that segment with that frequency and that monetary value. Do you want a, a tightly targeted reach or do you want a very wide reach? So together, the RFM numbers, they, they define the kind of audience you target. So we, uh, for example, for us, 999, that's highest on reach frequency and monetary value, mm -hmm. is the smallest target segment which yields the largest possible monetary outcomes, uh, uh, which has the highest affinity and yields the highest monetary outcomes. And you could go down and a 666 obviously is a lesser. It could be any combination of numbers, but it's just how high you want to go on one and how low you want to go on uh, other, right? Yeah. Um, so 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 we kind of use that to drill down and and i think in times like this when when brands are coming back to full distribution right and, and they they've maybe consumption has reduced people have switched brands people have stopped or reduced their consumption um, and as brands are coming back and their distribution and their logistics and supply chains are coming back um, and coming back in a different way across india right they need to kind of look at geographical areas where distribution is coming back, where you can build uh, uh, distribution and uh, go and target and build insights level targeting for that for that geography. Um, so again, like I said, bank of creatives, you cycle through it, uh, you have it for every region in a, look, in a certain language, depending on how your distribution or your logistics is in that region, and have a very outcomes driven campaign for that particular target segment or it and the target segment could be language based region based that's that's for everybody to arrive upon as, as what is the framework that works for them uh, wow. but having targeted insights to <clears throat> targeted communities of people backed by your distribution working or your brand being available in that you know to that particular community or to that particular region uh, i think that's where growth marketers uh, need to look at uh, and that that's the kind of growth marketing mindset that marketers need to adapt uh, for me uh, at this point you know okay. this is Sorry, fascinating I, I think i answered a lot of your questions in there no, you, you did this is just this is just fascinating stuff and, and i can see from some some of the comments that are uh, 
um, in the stream that uh, people are really, really uh, interested in this RFM. And yeah, so to uh, uh, just like, there's two things that I wanted to, to talk about super briefly. At the, at the end of last year, I made uh, one prediction that um, India would finally come of age in the gaming space, right? And, and when we talk about gaming, I'm talking about mobile. Um, and, you know, I see that as one of the predictions that it is actually finally starting to happen. Um, the other thing that I've always been curious about uh, is when Indian companies will actually start to make their presence felt on the global stage. Um, you want to comment on one of those? Um, no, I, I mean, both are exciting spaces. I, I can't talk to what we would do, uh, you know, in the future. Um, we, we look at a lot of opportunities. And like you said, gaming is, um, is a very exciting opportunity. And I think it's a space that's here to stay for a while, right? So we evaluate everything. Um, and we uh, kind of uh, want to pick up the thing that one is, uh, and I think again for every business, right? Look at adjacencies, look at adjacencies that you can easily fill uh, from an internal perspective because your skills are also built towards building those kind of adjacencies, whether you're in tech business or any other business. Um, and, and then look at opportunities that are sticky and uh, lead to engagement and not only help you grow, but also help you uh, from a from an acquisition perspective, but will also help you grow uh, by plugging a leaky bucket, which is the churn funnel. For most businesses, it's the churn that proves to be the killer, right? For a lot of businesses. So actually plugging that funnel, and if you can actually use that opportunity that you're seeing out there to actually, uh, you know, also improve your channel, uh, your, uh, your uh, uh, churn metrics, Mm -hmm. uh, then that's a powerful opportunity that you should actually chase down. But also if it's adjacency link, then it talks to your capabilities as well. Um, and in terms of, so yeah, gaming is definitely an exciting space. Uh, there are other exciting spaces also that, you know, we might be looking at. But, uh, you know, to your point about uh, globally and how we think about global is, uh, you know, again, uh, for us, India is a huge market at this point, and I think we've only scratched the surface of uh, consumer tech consumption in India. Um, and whether it's uh, whether it's a, you know, an advertising uh, based model or a service based model or a subscription based model or a transaction based model, uh, whatever it could be, whatever it might be, I think we're only scratching the surface of each of these models. Um, and so for me, going deeper into India, uh, one, where, right. you know, at one hand, at the one hand, you're building adoption, um, a different way of doing things, changing behavior, uh, you know, being the stepping stone uh, for people to a completely different kind of uh, approach to entertainment or a different kind of way of doing things, right? And again, this could be any category in the world. Um, to actually, uh, you know, having people pay for services, right? That's that's another nascent category category in India. So how do you actually, that's the two outcomes we want to link ourselves to, including all our marketing, um, all our, whether digital or online or, uh, and the product experience as well. And go, so at the one hand, go deeper into India, uh, you know, tier two, tier three, India become the default premium streaming service. And on the other hand, have people who, uh, you know, change the paying category in India and actually create that behavior uh, of paying for consumer tech services. Uh, so I think for us, those are those are huge spaces. And like like I, you know, like we mentioned earlier, we we are in eight different languages. Every region and every language is a completely different, uh, you know, approach and cultural insights and um, you know. And if you paint them with the same brush, the only person who loses is you yourself. So yeah. you've kind of kind of got to go and understand the cultural insights, the need gaps, very separately and differently, and almost anew in every region, while uh, while keeping at the core of it what you mean to a consumer as a business and why you exist and building something around that. Um, and so for us, I think that's the focus, uh, you know, um, right now. We also have launched, uh, you know, we've launched in uh, Southeast Asia and Indonesia 
uh, uh, we are going to launch, I'm sorry, on 5th September, the announcement has been out. Um, so yeah, we are looking at things where it makes sense for Disney Plus Hotstar to be in um, and actively pursuing it. But, but for sure, it's about going deeper into India and it's about creating a paying behavior into India in India at a mass scale that doesn't exist today. So I think for us, that's the that's where we see ourselves heading. That sounds amazing, and and, and it really does sound like you have your uh, hands full uh, of of things to do, and uh, you've got a lot of uh, localization and culturalization as well um, within your own market. So, so just to, uh, to as we kind of wrap this up right now. Um, I just want to do a quick fire round with you, a couple of questions, just so that the audience has a sense of some of his uh, favorite things. So, sure. what is your favorite TV show? Um, I think uh, Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. No, that's a good that's one. And, and do you have a favorite fictional character? Um, recently now, uh, I think, uh, like every kid who grew up at my time, I think it used to be superman um, at one point uh, you know but now for me i think uh, captain marvel captain marvel i think it was quite amazing i think that's a character that actually combines characteristics of superman and is an avenger so uh, you know for me it's captain marvel now yeah M mine is spider-man but i don't really like spiders that much uh, <laughs> do you, what was the last song you listened to on your playlist i'm sorry Say that again. What was the last song that you listened to on the playlist? Uh, yeah, it's funny. I just listened to one yesterday, and the video is really amazing. It's it's very interesting. It's called it's a song by Black Eyed Peas called Action. Uh, give me some action or action. I don't know the name exactly, but no. uh, basically, they've used deep fake technology to and the song. The footage of that video of the song is all Indian, is unbelievable. It's like impractical and unbelievable Indian action movie shots. And the video is just a deep fake uh, with Black Eyed Peas, you know, superimposed on that video. So it's quite wow. interesting. The future of music, maybe. Do you have a preference between Android or Apple? <laughs> um, I think for me, Apple. I've been tempted at various points to try Android. Uh, but for now, it's Apple. Okay. And my last question, what is your favorite food? My favorite food is, uh, you know, Ron and you probably eat it every day. It's Thai food. And I know you're based there. <laughs> uh, I wish I could swap places with you so I could eat Thai food every day. But, but yeah, it's Thai. You're invited anytime uh, that the travel routes open up to come visit us and Thai food is on me. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's a safe. You're you're making a very safe bet right now because uh, you're counting on me not being able to travel to Thailand. But uh, it, you know. it would be my total pleasure to uh, host you for uh, lunch dinner. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Sid. It's been great having you on the epicenter, and and thank you everyone who joined us today. Have a great thank day. You. Thanks, Ronan. All right.